And as electronics started to appear in the rock music scene and in the underground world, um, there were people who were making use of the electronics in a, in a distinctly personal way, like the band Silver Apples, who used tuned oscillators instead of proper musical instruments to, to make their music. People were repurposing things like the the home organ rhythm boxes that, you know, had like pre-programmed bossa nova rhythms and that sort of thing for you to play along with with your home organ. So bands like Suicide and uh, Cabaret Voltaire and uh, Metal Urbane in France, like these bands were, they were repurposing a kind of a kitsch item to make really groundbreaking, really unique music. And I found all of that in, intensely invigorating, like just the, the, the range of sounds that people were making, the degree of creativity, how, how every song and every record by every band in that idiom was distinctly different from the rest, you know. As electronic music became a kind of a vehicle for dance music, I kind of lost my taste for it. So a lot of the music that's derived from that, a lot of the music that's derived from club music like that is, uh, to my mind, it's like it, it, it's like part of a scene. And to be in that scene, you have to go to those venues and listen to that music and take those drugs and hang out with those people. And, and, and I'm... Uh, I'm not in that audience. I'm not doing any of those things. Um, so a lot of the club-inspired electronic music and the music that's evolved from that, um, which is facilitated by digital recording, like recording on a workstation where you have a nonlinear workflow and you can use pre-recorded sounds and samples and synthetic instruments and quantize things and create create a collage of music that way entirely inside a computer like I, d I just don't have any relationship with that kind of music i all the records that i make I, I make in the analog domain on on tape machines using microphones and a mixing desk and when i did experiment with electronic music it, um it was using hardware electronics um Synthesizers, drum machines, noise generators, oscillators, gates, triggers, you know, modules and things like that that would allow me to process sounds and, and make sounds in, in the electronic domain. And a lot of the music that I admired from that era, um, from the, the early electronic music era, it had this kind of uh, homemade quality where you could tell each person had like sort of put together a rig that was distinctly personal to them and they like they were the only people on earth that could oscill that could that could operate it like if if I sat you down in front of Wendy Carlos's synthesizer rig you know you probably couldn't make a sound out of it you know because she had built it to suit her methods and it was a distinctly personal sound and a distinctly personal approach to music there's a synthesizer called the uh, the bukla synthesizer which was a very early um synthesizer with um modules in the sense that we now understand all synthesizers to have where there's like a tone module and an envelope module and a filter module the Bukla was one of the one of the first to recognize that paradigm or that architecture, and the Bukla didn't even have a keyboard. Um, the Bukla just had like a, a tone, uh, like a touchpad strip that you would use to to pick a frequency, and, you know, and all frequencies were fair game. It wasn't a, a tempered keyboard, for example. And the the same with thing, instruments like the theremin or the stylophone, even like the stylophone. Um, was a kind of a toy instrument, but it, you know, it was a lot of people's way into making music with an instrument that was purely electronic and, uh, and it didn't have the, the sort of strictures or limitations that a classical instrument did. So I, um, like a, a lot of that music appealed to me, not just because I liked the way it sounded, like it was cool music, sounded cool, but there was an element of 
aggressive experimentation there rather than uh, conformity to an idiom, which is what I felt crippled things like disco and um, industrial music, like later industrial music. Like the term industrial music was was first applied to bands like Throbbing Gristle and their cohort. Like they're, they talked about making music uh, as a manufacturing process or as a, as a mechanical industry. And that's where that term um, came from. But it was later applied to the kind of high energy dance music that bands like Front 242 and those sort of bands were making. Uh, and that was very explicitly, very specifically club music meant to be played in clubs for people to take drugs and dance to. And um, and that whereas the earlier electronic music or the, the electronic music that kind of inspired that term uh, was meant to distinguish itself from a kind of um, genteel performance based music that had existed prior to that, you know. It, it was intended to distinguish itself from the vocabulary of notes and scales and rhythms and uh, bands with members who had fixed roles and even a fixed perception of what a performance was. Um, there were a lot of experimental bands it, like in the sort of fractures created by punk and the art scene around punk there there was a space to make all different kinds of music and all different kinds of performances could be taken seriously as music. And I found that incredibly invigorating, uh, just that there, that there was no guidelines for what your music was meant to sound like. So you'd have a punk show, for example, in Chicago, where you'd have like a fairly straightforward rocking punk band and then there would be a band like End Result who were looked like the same kind of people and from the same sort of social scene, but the music they made was kind of, was this like distinctly formless experiment in music, you know. And then their good friends Ono would play, and Ono was another experimental band from Chicago who had even less relationship to the the rock tradition and you know the the, the strictures of guitar bass and drums or or whatever thanks for watching guys if you like what you see make sure to subscribe for more all the videos on this channel are original i'm the one conducting all the interviews and editing all the videos together so if you guys like what you see and you want to support the best way to do so is honestly just to subscribe lots more to come